Ever since the Next.js 13 app router with React server components was released, people have been asking about how to use TRPC with that. TRPC is a fantastic type-safe remote procedure call system that worked really well with the Pages router. In particular, people used the T3 application stack, which was based on TRPC and Pages. But we really didn't have any patterns for how to work with the app router. Now we do. I'm going to show you that in this video. We're going to go build a simple to-do list application that uses TRPC to connect to Drizzle for an ORM to connect to SQLite. And we'll do a simple to-do list. Yeah, I know. All right. And of course, in the meantime, uh, if you are interested in Next.js, be sure to check out pronextjs.dev. That's a course that I'm working on. It's not released yet, but you can sign up for a newsletter, and you'll get tips and tricks and all kinds of great stuff. And you'll also be notified when that course is available. So go check it out today. All right. Let's get right into our to-do list using TRPC on the app router with Drizzle. Let's get right into it. All right, let's start off with a boilerplate Next.js 13 application using Tailwind and the source directory, of course, using the app router. And the first thing we're going to do is just pare down this home page. We'll just replace it with a blank page currently. And then we'll start getting into TRPC. So the first thing we need to do is add some libraries. Now, in this setup, our Next.js server is going to serve a dual role. It'll serve our pages off of Slash, and then it'll, it will also serve the TRPC endpoint off of slash API, slash TRPC, and then the TRPC verb. So first off, we need to install the package that allows us to act as a server. So we'll bring in the TRPC server package. We're also, of course, going to make queries, and that makes us a client. So we need to bring in all of the TRPC client code. We are going to be using Tanstack's React Query on top of TRPC. So that's why we're also going to be installing TRPC React Query as well as Tanstack React Query as well as the TRPC client. So the first thing you need to do when you create a TRPC server is initialize that TRPC server. So all of the server code is going to go in the server directory under source. Let's go and create our TRPC file inside of source server. So to do that, I'm going to do a fun trick for you. I'm going to do server slash trpc.ts, and that's going to create the server directory for me. If you didn't know that little shortcut, there's one for you right there. So here we just initialize a TRPC server, and we get back from that the router and also public procedure. Now we're going to go make our TRPC router that's going to have our procedures on it. I'm going to put that in index.ts. So we create our instance of an app router using that router that we just created over in TRPC, and then we use that to add any functions we want. In this case, we're going to add the get to dos function, and it's just going to return 10, 20, 30, some numbers. We just want to see how this is actually going to work from the client to the TRPC endpoint. So let's hit save. Now we actually need to connect it into the app router itself. To do that, we need to create a route inside of the app directory that's going to route requests to that TRPC instance. To do that, I'm going to create a new file in API slash TRPC. And then the brackets TRPC directory, that's going to capture whatever the verb is, in this case, get to do's, and it's going to set that as one of the route parameters. And then we create a route handler. To do that, we use route.ts. And again, using these slashes is going to give us all of those directories. All right, so this is the part where you actually see the big difference between the Pages Router implementation and the App Router implementation. In the Pages Router, there's actually a already set up adapter specific to Next.js, which is customized for pages. That doesn't work for the app router. For the app router, we use the fetch adapter, which just happens to have the exact same signatures that we need for the route handlers in Next.js with the app router. It's really cool, and it actually works. And you'll never need to change this particular piece of code. From here on out, to just add more functions, the only thing you're going to need to do is just add more items into the index. All right, so let's hit save on that. All right, so now let's try it. We can actually call get to do's right out of the browser. So let's bring it up. And this is what our app currently looks like. Of course, we want to go over to API, TRPC, 
and then get to do's. And just like that, we have our data. So the next thing we want to do is make this request using React Query from the client. So let's go get that set up. So the first thing we want to do is create a trpc client. To do that, I'm going to create a new directory called underscore trpc. And then within that, client.ts. And I used underscore trpc because any directory starting with underscore is ignored by the app router in terms of routing. So now we're going to create our trpc react client. We do that by getting the app router types from the server, and then we create our trpc react using the react query adapter library. Now we do command k command i on app router. We see that we have get to do's as a type coming off of that server. So that's how it's actually routing the types all the way from your server code to your client code. Now, React Query needs a provider. So we need to go and create a query client as well as a provider. So I'm going to go do that in the provider.tsx file in trpc. Now in here, we're going to create a React Query client as well as a trpc client. And then we're going to vend those down to any included children. So let's go and use this provider in our layout. So we'll bring in our provider, and then we'll wrap our children in that provider. Now we're going to create a to-do list. That is an interactive thing. We're going to be using React Query from the client. That means that we need to create a client component. So let's go create a new directory called components that has a to-do list in it. So we'll start off with a to-do list client component. Now let's go and make that request to get to-dos. To do that, we start with trpc. And then we can see that we have all of the functions, in this case, just get to-dos, listed already on that trpc object. And then what's in that? Well, we get a whole bunch of stuff. We get use query, and that's the React query, use query hook, but automatically targeted at our trpc backend. And now let's just JSON stringify the data that we get back, and let's bring it into our page. And there we go. There's the 10, 20, 30 data that we had over in our trpc endpoint. So if I change that to 4050, add some more, come back there. And because we are basically refreshing the server code, that's going to do a hot module reload on the client, and we get our new data. How cool is that? Now, to make this example more practical, I want to connect us to a database. Now, to do that really easily, you could use a couple of different things. You could use Prisma, or you could use Drizzle. So we're going to try out Drizzle with SQLite, and we'll see how it goes. So the first thing we need to do is add Drizzle to our project. To do that, we're bringing in Drizzle ORM and then also a SQLite adapter called Better SQLite 3. SQLite 3 doesn't have types, so we need to bring in the TypeScript types for those. And now we need to specify our schema. What is our database actually going to hold? So I'm going to create a new file called db schema.ts. So we've got a directory called db and then within that schema. And then we're just going to say that we have to-dos, and we're going to give it the fields. In this case, ID is just a primary key, and then content is the content of the to-do, and then done is an integer in this case that's zero if it's not done and one if it is done. It's an integer at this point because SQLite doesn't have a Boolean, if you can believe that. Now we need to tell Drizzle where all this stuff is, so we need to create a Drizzle configuration file. So up at the top level, I'll create a drizzle.config.ts. Now, our configuration uses Drizzle Kit because this Drizzle Kit is what you actually use to do migrations. So let's go and add that. Otherwise, we're just telling where our database is, what the driver is, and what the credentials are. Now, with Drizzle Kit, we need to go and create our first migration. So I'm going to do Drizzle Kit generate SQLite. And that's going to give us this error about ES5. Turns out the TS config that comes off the shelf with App Router is targeting ES5. If we just bounce that up to ES6, we can get it to build our migration. All right, so it's built one table migration for us. We can see that over in the Drizzle directory in our migration. It's gone and created our to dos. So now we've got our database all set up. Now we just need to connect it to our trpc. To do that, we go over to our server and then into index.ts. And this is where all the action is going to happen now. So we need to bring in our Drizzle stuff. So we're going to bring in Drizzle. We're going to bring in Migrate. Migrate is going to run every time we start up and automatically migrate the database if it's needed. And then we bring in our database driver from Better SQLite. 
Then we need to bring in our to-dos object from our schema. That's what we're going to use to actually make all the requests. Next, we need to set up our SQLite database, point it at our database, and then create our database drizzle object. And then we migrate using that database and the directory that we just created. So now we can replace this hard-coded data with a query of our database. Now to do that, all we do is we just say that we want to select off that database from the to-dos table, and we want all of them. But you can add any kind of additional where clauses as you want. It's a standard kind of ORM, similar to what you'd see in Prisma. All right, so what we're going to get back now is an empty database. So we need a way to add a to-do item to the database. That means adding another remote procedure call. So in order to do that, we need to have some way to validate the input. For that, we're going to use Zod. So we've added Zod. So we add Zod to our project, and then we import it in this file. And now we can say that we have a new function called add to do. It's going to be a public procedure. But now we get to define what its inputs are. So we say input, and now we'll just say that we want a string. So z.string. That's all you need for this. We only need the content, so we just need a string. And it's going to be a type of mutation as opposed to a query. And so we'll have an async function that takes some options. And then so we'll call db.insert. Now it's a promise, so we want to await that. Where do we want to insert? Well, we want to insert into todos. Then we need to give it its values, in this case, the content, which we're going to get from ops input. And then done, we're going to set to zero. And then we're just going to run it. And we'll say it's always going to work, so return true. All right, cool. Now we've got our add to do endpoint. Let's go and try it out. To do that, we need to have an input as well as a button. So we're going to have some state. So let's bring in use state. The state is going to be the content. So let's track that. And down here below this div, we'll have an input field as well as a button that's going to make the call to that add to do. So now to get that add to do, we go back to our TRPC. And of course, now we got add to do. Ta da! And we know it's a mutation, so it's only going to give us a use mutation. How cool is that? Now we go and check to see if it's an empty string. And if it's not an empty string, then we call that mutate function on that add to do. All right, the page is up and running. We're getting an empty array at the top. That means that it's made the request. That's really good. So let's try it out. Let's add in first to do. Hit add to do. And now if we refresh, we see that we get the updated data. So how do we force that refresh every time? Well, we do that by going over into use mutation and then look for the on settled event. And when everything is settled, then we do a refetch on get to do's. So we do get to do's, refetch. Let's try it again. And there you go. How cool is that? All right, let's make this look nice with Tailwind. We'll go and add some Tailwind styling. Ah, oh, looks pretty nice. OK, cool. I'm getting kind of tired of this backdrop, so I'm just going to remove that. And now let's format up these to-dos nice and pretty. We'll get rid of our JSON stringify. And we'll just iterate over that data that we get back using a map. And we'll create inputs for each one. Now let's have a look first. All right, looks pretty good. Now I do want to go over one thing here. So if we look at get to-dos data, we can see that we actually get all of the typing. And this is where the big advantage of TRPC is. So let's take an example where I didn't use TRPC to call that same endpoint. So if we have a use effect, which might be the way that you would make that fetch if you didn't have TRPC, what you get back from typing on to-dos here is going to be just any, because we have no idea what's coming back from the server. That's the huge win with TRPC. TRPC is preserving the types all the way from the schema, all the way through Drizzle, through those remote procedure calls, all the way up into the client on both queries and mutations. And it's doing it really, really simply. All right, now we have a checkbox on these. And we want to be able to actually set that done case. So let's go and create a remote procedure call for that. To do that, we're going to add a set done remote procedure call. Now, set done is going to take as input an object. That object's going to have an ID on it. Which one do you want me to change? And then the new done value. And then it's going to call the update on the ORM. But we do need to bring in EQ here. So I bring that in from the drizzle ORM. 
All right, looking pretty good. So now we need to go over to our to-do list and we need to bring in our set done. Well, what do we have here? Well, we have set done. How cool is that? So fast. And then down in our input, we're just gonna add an on change that says, whatever it was, just flip it. So let's hit save. And there we go, and we can hit refresh. And you'll see the one last thing that I actually wanna cover, which is you see that flash, right? If I do refresh, it doesn't happen instantaneously. In fact, if we look at the page source, we can see that there is nothing in the page source for our to-do list. All of the requests are coming off of the client. So if you wanna use this system with server-side rendering, well, what do you do? Well, it turns out that's actually pretty easy too. So let's jump into that and see how that goes. To do that, we're gonna start with a server client over in our TRPC directory. It's basically like the original client, but in this case, we're gonna do create caller. And this is just a basic TRPC system that anything can use, not React in particular. So here we go. Let's go and use this to make HTTP requests over to our endpoint, but do it in a type safe way. So go back into our page, which is where we wanna do that fetch. We'll bring in our server client. We'll make this an async function, and then we'll get our to-dos. So how do we do that? Well, we call a server client, and we do get to-dos. Of course, that is a promise, so let's await that. And let's see, what do we get back? Well, we get back exactly what we want, totally type safe. Now let's pass these as the initial to-dos to our to-do list. Of course, it doesn't understand what that is, so let's go and add that initial to-dos prop to our to-do list. So we'll say we have initial to-dos, and we'll type it. But what do we type it as? Well, let's go get the return from the request that we just made. So we take the return type of the get to-dos function coming off of that server client. But is that right? Well, let's do a command K, command I. What we're getting is the right data, but it's actually wrapped in a promise. So how do we unwrap the promise? Because we've already got that data. We don't have a promise for it. So we'll use awaited for that. And now if we look at the typing, we have exactly the type that we want. And if we go over to page, no problems, looks good. Okay, so what do we do with this initial to-dos? Well, we use it as the initial data on our use query. So our use query takes the parameters that you would send to the query. In this case, it's just undefined. And then it takes a set of options. So we're gonna start with initial data, which is going to be our initial to-dos. Let's hit save. Try it out, and now there's no flicker. And if we go take a look at the page source, we can see that the data has been rendered into tags during server-side rendering, which means that we have a fully server-side rendering system. Awesome. I have just one more thought though. Let's go take a look at the network inspector and hit refresh. And we can see that we're actually making that call again on the client when we are mounted. So we can actually avoid that because we don't really need to do that by adding on two additional parameters to our use query refetch on mount and refetch on reconnect. And now if we go back to the network panel, we can see that we don't make that secondary request from the client because we already have that data. But if we add another to do, we do end up making that secondary request to get the new data. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed this look into how to use TRPC within the app router. I'm certainly excited about it. I love TRPC. And I'm also getting to love this drizzle ORM. It's pretty cool too. Of course, I'd love to hear from you. Any comments that you may have, be sure to put that in the comment section right down below. And if you like this video, do me a favor and hit that like button. If you really like the video, hit the subscribe button, click on that bell. And of course, head on over to pronextjs.dev and sign up for that newsletter to get all of the hints and tips and tricks and get the news for when that course comes out.